Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to make this cute icon animation and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do, please don't forget to leave that like and if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to learn in the most effective way, be sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through local illustration all the way to full character illustration and textured environment. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all let's select the cube and the light, press X and delete, we don't need them but we can leave the camera in place. And now let's press shift A and we'll start with the plane. Now let's tap into the edit mode and let's press S then Y and scale it up a little bit. Just like this and now that the origin point is at the bottom we can extrude this up so press E to extrude. And now we'll do several cuts so press Ctrl R and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel and let's do something like four cuts right here and now we can look from the side by pressing 3 on an numpad enable x-ray view just select these four press g then z and move them up a little bit and then we can move these two all like this now let's define the shape from this view so let's press ctrl r again and let's increase cuts to something like three right click to release and we can press S then Y and just scale it up like this and now we can select this set of vertices press S then Y and start scaling it up and here these two rows as well so we get this shape on the side and now maybe we can make these go a little bit closer by scaling them and now let's look from the front and here we're gonna need some more cuts so let's press Ctrl R and here we'll need more precise control so we'll need four cuts right click to release and let's just select these vertices in the middle press s then x scale them up and this here as well and maybe we can make this larger at the bottom so this should be um, the approximate shape that you should get and now i want to make uh, let's disable the x-ray view i want to make these two rows a little bit wider so let's press 3 for face select, alt click this loop and now hold alt and shift and select this one and hold period on a keyboard and switch to individual origins and let's press S then X and scale them up a little bit just like this and now we can press ctrl R create two more cuts right here and let's adjust the shape so again I will enable x-ray go for vertex select press G then Z and bring them up slightly so we um, Kind of maintain the curvature now let's disable x-ray view and now three four face select again and let's select this face hold control to select the whole loop now hold shift select the other one and by holding control we can select the whole strip and let's press e to extrude tiny bit and now e again to extrude all the way down let's look from the side by pressing three on a numpad now enable x-ray view and we can press g then z and move it down even more and now press s then z and zero to scale it to zero and now E again to extrude. So now we can tab out and press Ctrl 2 to add subdivision surface modifier. Well, let's disable the X-ray view and this is the shape you should get. Um, if you want, you can play with the shape. So for example, if you want this to be like more cartoony, um, you can go ahead and make these parts wider at the bottom. Like this if you you know want the shape more pronounced and more funky but other than that i'm quite satisfied with the result so let's just add some details first of all um let's select the bottom faces so press 3 for face select select one corner and now hold ctrl and shift and click to the opposite corner and now let's press shift d to duplicate right click to release and we'll press p and separate the whole selection into a new object as you can see right here so now if I tab out and select the new object, we can just continue the edit. And now press 2 for edge select, hold Alt and Shift and just select these edges on the side. Press E then Z and extrude them up. And then S and Shift Z to scale only on X and Y axis. Tiny bit and now we'll modify the top shape. So tab out, select the top shape, tab into the edit mode and we'll just select Alt, press G then Z and bring it up tiny bit. And now we can tab out, select both of them and bring them up because I want like a little legs there to stand on. So we can do that right now. Let's tab out, let's press shift A and we'll add a circle. Now let's modify this to something like 12 
Where this is, let's look from the top, tab into the edit mode, and again we'll need X-ray view, and just press S to scale it down and move it to the corner. And now we can go to the modifiers panel and enable mirror modifier and enable Y axis as well. Now let's press F to fill and E to extrude. And now we can press X and delete that face. And now if you tab out and press Ctrl 2 to add subdivision modifier, they will get subdivided like this, which is what we want. And now in the front, let's tab in and let's disable the X-ray view. Um, I want like a little ridge here for, for the knob. So press 3 for face select. And let's select these two faces and just press E to extrude tiny bit and then E again to extrude all the way like this. And now we can go for edge select by pressing 2, select this edge right there, press Shift D to duplicate it, right click to release in place and again P and enter to separate the selection. Tap out and select the new object and press E then Y, extrude it a little bit and then E and Y again like that and press A and extrude this down. And additionally, press Ctrl R and add a loop cut up there and we can push this a little bit inside and up. And now I'll just move the origin point. So select this edge, hold Shift S and snap cursor to select it. Now tab out, now right click and set origin to 3D cursor. So now we can look from the side and basically place it a little bit better like this. And now we'll extrude this even more inside and we can move this up and down however we want but up here i don't like how it's curved because it kind of hits the walls there so let's modify this a little bit and we'll bring this up with yet another loop cut by pressing ctrl r okay that's about that and basically um this is finished now only a small detail up there so tab into the edit mode and i'll hold alt and shift and select these loops right here same on the other side. Press Shift D to duplicate, right click to release. And again, as you guessed, P and enter to separate the selection into a new object. Tab out, select that new object. And first of all, just reduce the subdivision to one, right click and convert to curve. And now we can go to the curve settings and in the geometry section, increase the bevel depth right here like that. And we can now press Ctrl 1 to add that additional subdivision level, right click and shade smooth. And additionally, we can tap into the edit mode and move it down a little bit. So we have openings like this. And basically now we can tap out, select everything and shade it smooth. And this should be the final model. Now hold shift, select the body and press Ctrl P and parent to object. We want this to be moving um, with the body and now hold shift S and snap cursor to wall origin to reset it. And now let's press shift A, we'll add a plane, tap into the edit mode and press R, then Y and 90 degrees. Tab out, press G then X and move it to the side so we better see what we are doing here. And now tap into the edit mode, press Ctrl R and create a cut right here. Now press Ctrl B to bevel and increase number of cuts to three like this. And now select the middle edge and press S to scale it down just like that. And additionally press Ctrl R and create like four cuts right here. And now we can select these edges, move them up this one as well and press one for vertex select and we'll move these down and we'll scale these together but before we do hold period on a keyboard and switch to medium point press s then y and bring them closer now let's press ctrl r and bring this down and we can add a few more cuts for better shading but all in all this should be enough so we can press a to select all and e to extrude now let's look from the top press a and G then X to move it over the cursor right here. We want this to be in the middle. And now tab out and press Ctrl 2 to add subdivision surface. Now tab back in, press Ctrl R and add two support loops on the sides there, like this. And additionally, we can create the cross. So press 3 for face select, Alt click this loop, press Shift D and again P enter to separate. Tab out, select a new object. Tab into the edit mode, press A and S then X to make it larger a little bit. Now again, we'll create two support loops. So press Ctrl R to create them and press A and Alt E and extrude faces along normals and extrude them out just like this. And that should be enough. And now we can select everything here and make it a little bit smaller. So it better touches the 
bread inside now tab out hold shift select the middle part and press ctrl j to join um, there's no reason why we should have them as separate objects right click and shade smooth now let's look from the front and press g and move it right here maybe this can be a little bit larger so tab into the edit mode press a and s then x to make it a little bit wider and then position it a little bit better but this is something that we are looking for right here and i won't create the other one uh, just yet because i want to animate this first and we are basically now ready for the animation there's just one more thing we need to do and that's to prepare the lattice modifier so let's press shift a and choose lattice and now let's look from the side and enable x-ray view we can press g then z move this up and just scale it up using s let's position it a little bit better and then s then y and scale it on y axis as well like this and now we'll add some resolution so let's do something like four on each axis something like that and now we'll select the toaster and in the modifiers panel let's add the lattice modifier and we'll choose this lattice right here and additionally we'll select everything here hold control to select the lattice only the toaster should be highlighted in yellow that means it's active so we are now able to click here and copy um, the lattice modifier to all of the other objects so now if we edit that let's exit the x-ray view tab into the edit mode you can now modify the whole thing like this and create really you know uh, funky cartoon animations so let's prepare um, some states for the lattice modifier and i want to go here and in the data properties um, let's tab out and insert first basic shape key and now let's create the second one tab into the edit mode and that will be like a crouch uh, for the toaster when we actually press um, the lever down or when it actually like prepares for jump or something so let's look from the front and toggle the x-ray so we are able to select all of the control points and now just select these top three press g then z move this down and we'll make this wider at the bottom so press s scale it up and this thing here as well and maybe we can scale this down a tiny bit now we can tap out and you will see it goes right back but if you start playing um, with the key value here you can see um, the shape is there and this can be easily animated so let's prepare another one and let's tap in and there'll be like a jump uh, and of course ejecting the toast so let's again enable x-ray we can select these press s then shift z and scale them closer together and bring them up a tiny bit and here we can go higher up and larger so press s and scale it up so this is the kind of shape i'm looking for here now we can preview that right here and now we are ready to block out some animations so let's expand the timeline view here and let's hold shift select the toaster and press ctrl p and parent um, because i want this lattice to be parented uh, here as well i want this to move and of course um, the bread too don't forget that so when you move the toaster we want all of this to move and now the first like 10 or 15 frames will be like um, crouching of the toaster and kind of enabling it so let's press g then z move this up so it's prepared and now press n for the side panel and we'll insert the z position here keyframe so right click and insert single keyframe and we'll move it to like frame 15 and press g then z move it down and right click and insert single keyframe so this is like the first animation that we're gonna do here and let's go to the output settings and prepare for 30 fps so we better see what's happening in the animation in the real time and i think something like 100 frames should be enough for the whole animation and you can hold control and middle mouse button to expand this and now let's select the lattice and let's go to the object data properties and first of all let's insert two keyframes for both of these key values so press i hovering over this and here as well and now let's move to that frame 15 and here i want to crouch so something like this maybe not all the way so something like 0.7 and press i to insert the keyframe and of course we want the toast to go in so let's move it a little bit higher up 
like this. And now let's go to frame one and right click and insert single keyframe on the Z location. And if we enable the X-ray view, we can see the cavity there. So when we go to frame 15, we want this to be somewhere here and we can go lower. It doesn't really matter that much and insert single keyframe. So now this is what will happen here. And basically the animation will start so we can go ahead and duplicate this keyframe, but I can see there's not a keyframe for the second key. So let's fix that and let's press I hovering over that. And now we'll press Shift D and duplicate it to frame 60. So it doesn't move um, this whole part right here in between those frames. And now we are able to go to like frame 65 or 67. Uh, 65 should be enough because I want this to be really quick and let's reduce this to zero and increase this to something like 0.8 or all the way like if you're satisfied with the final shape you can go all the way um, doesn't really matter that much and now we'll press i hovering over these twice so this is the animation we're getting and of course um the toaster should jump here so let's go here to the frame 60 select the toaster and right click and insert the keyframe for the z location and at frame 65 we want this to go up so press g then z and move it up maybe not so much and right click insert single keyframe and then it should land like somewhere here maybe or let's do 70 we'll see how that works so let's go back to zero right click and insert single keyframe and of course um the shape should go back so select the lattice here um on the frame 70 and let's bring this down and this up like this press i hovering over these and then it should kind of bounce back so on the frame 75 we can go back to zero on this and press i to inset okay so let's preview the block out okay that's quite okay and now the jump of the toast so let's select the toast itself and on the frame 60 let's duplicate the frame from 15 to 60 and now we'll go up here like this right click and insert single keyframe and then back down like this so let's just duplicate this frame and we can go further with this like frame 80. Okay, I think that will be enough for the block out. And now we'll take care of the animation curves. So let's press Control tab hovering over the timeline and we can explore these one by one. So first of all, let's take care of the jump. Um, right here, the curve looks like this, which is not optimal. Uh, so let's just drag the handle here and make it more sudden in the beginning and on the land as well. So it kind of stays in the air a little bit a little bit longer and then the drop or the jump is a little bit more sudden and let's do the same for the toast here so let's just move it here in the middle and then we'll move these handles but here we'll need to select the frame select the keyframe press v and change this to free so we are able to move these handles like that and here let's bring this up as well but now here i want to select this top keyframe press T and choose bounce interpolation that will create a curve like this so we are able now to move this a little bit closer and this further away so we get a better curve like this okay let's preview the animation okay now let's look in the beginning I think this might be a little bit more sudden as well Okay, and here as well. So let's just move these handles and make this a little bit more steep. Okay, and now for the lattice, uh, we'll do the same here. So let's expand this and we'll hide the value two for now. And now let's expand this here. So it's a little bit more sudden. And now let's create the wiggle movement. 
So with this track of the key value still selected, uh, we can go to the modifiers and insert built-in function. They'll create a sign, um, but we can restrict the frame range and choose 15 and 60 as beginning and end. Um, so we basically just inserted procedural animation within those frames. And this is of course too hectic. So first of all, um, we'll need to reduce the multiplier here, the phase multiplier to something like this. But let's make sure we have like two exact values right here in the beginning and end. And then we can play with the offset. So we can bring it closer here like this. We can choose additive. And of course, we don't want to go to the negative values. So we'll reduce the amplitude and then play with the value offset. So we better place it um, within the reach of these keyframes. So it kind of just fluently continues the animation. And then, you know, when we hit our keyframes, it continues the manual animation here. Now that's for the lattice modifier. And now I want to add a little rotation um, to the bread. So let's select the bread. And here on the frame 60, we'll just go ahead and insert the Y rotation. So insert single keyframe. And then here at the top of the animation, we'll just change this to 360 and right click and insert single keyframe. But now when I play back, I want this to be happening a little bit later, um, but it's really hard to tell now because this is really long line because the, we are using the degrees here and meters for the position. So we can press A to select all and just press period on a keyboard to focus on our animation. Or better yet, we can hide the Z location track, press A and period on an ampet so we better see um, this animation flow and press G to move this handle right here. So it's more sudden. Okay, and we'll just move it a little bit later in the animation. So maybe that's too much of a sudden movement. Yeah, something like this. Okay. Nice. And if you want to see the whole animation, just select all of the objects and hide the Y rotation um, for the bread. And now press A and period on an ampet again so we can see all the curves that's happening there. So we have this beginning, now the procedural part and then the jump. And what we want to do is to duplicate this. So press Alt D then X and duplicate it right here. And now if you play it back, you will see they're jumping together, but that's not what we want because they would kind of just like rotate through each other. So we need to separate their animation. So let's now select the bread. And now in the Z location track, we want to move this higher up. So let's go to the frame 68 and we want to press G then Y here and just move this higher up. And now I can see I made a little bit of a mistake uh, because I didn't copy the initial rotation, the initial position right here. So let's fix that right here for both of those. So let's select the first one, select the first keyframe, press Shift D, then X, and just move it right here. And the bounce should kick in and it should override that. And we'll do the same for this one. Like this. And then hold shift, select the first, and we'll move them lower. So press G then Y and move them lower like that. And here um, we want this uh, to be less aggressive here on the movement. So we have a different starting positions for both. And then the second one jumps a little bit higher like this. And they both land on their initial position. Okay, um, let me now just press shift A, we'll add a plane tap in and scale it up to create a background. Now let's look from the camera by pressing zero on an ampet. Press G then Z, move this up and G and Z twice to move backwards a little bit. Okay, and I will just now go ahead and do a little, you know, materials and lighting and stuff. So this looks a little bit better and I will see you on the other side. Thank you. 
So that's it for a few lights and materials and now when you're ready with your animation you just go to the output panel and choose your folder right here, switch to FFmpeg and in the encoding section um, choose MP4 and basically that's everything and now make sure in the render settings you have lower sample count, something like 64 or, or even 32 when, you're, when you want to test out the animation and then when you're satisfied you can ramp up. Um, these samples if it's not enough with the noising. So that's it for today's animation. I really hope you enjoyed it and again if you did please leave that like and if you're new around here and you want to see more hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Yeah.